Hello there and welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. I've taken some criticism over the past year for only reviewing inexpensive and predominantly Chinese fountain pens. A viewer recently commented that she was amazed I kept falling for, quote, crappy pens and that I should stick to, quote, established brands. I responded by saying, you mean Cross, Parker, and Schaefer? The main reason I review inexpensive pens, which are usually made in China, is that if I reviewed Pilot, Platinum, Opus 88, Lamy, Kaveco, and Pelican, as the viewer suggested, I'd only do two or three videos a year. I average 10 to 12 fountain pen reviews a month. If I paid $100 plus per pen, I'd end up with the same credit card debt that forced Matt Armstrong into silence. So let's see, Pilot, Platinum, Opus 88, Lamy, Kaveco, and Pelican. Well, I have two Pilots. I have a Metro and an E95S Gold Nib. I reviewed both, and the E95 was Christmas present. Yes, I want a Pilot 823, but it might have to wait until next Christmas. Platinum. I've already reviewed the Platinum Preppy, and the Platinum 3776 in Shard Blue that I adore will have to wait for my birthday in 2021, I'm afraid. Opus 88. Let's see. The least expensive runs between 100 and 125 bucks, not including shipping, for a number five steel nib injection molded plastic pen made in Taiwan. Okay, what about Lamy? Well, James was nice enough to give me this Lamy Safari, which I reviewed. I'd never buy one on my own with my own money, so thanks, James. Most other Lamy pens have metal sections and are over 100 bucks. Pass. What about Caveco? Another terrific German engineered pen. And again, thanks to James, I have this lovely Caveco Sport Classic, which I've reviewed and I'm using every day now. What about one of Caveco's regular size fountain pens? Well, I'm looking at about $170 Canadian for a number five steel nib plastic pen without a converter and not including shipping. I'll be getting a Platinum 3776 for my local pen shop long before I bite on that one. And Pelican. These are Grail pens. I've already done a review of a vintage Pelican M200 loaned to me by a friend. I restored it and replaced the nib. It's a beautiful piston filler, which is a little small for my hand. A Pelican M800 or an M1000 is certainly on my grail list, perhaps on my 70th birthday, if I make it. So what to do? Well, this is what I have in the extended parcel post supply line right now. I'm still waiting for my Moonman T2, ordered March 17th. If and when I get that pen, I will argue the fact that it is not a ripoff of the stipula and why I disagree with David Parker for taking down his review. I also have a full N017 coming sometime this century, which I also ordered in March. This is a beautiful looking pen with a number six nib and some fascinating resin. It comes highly recommended. It's about 25 bucks. I also ordered this Admoc Deluxe turned acrylic resin fountain pen with a number five steel block nib for around 30 bucks. I suppose I'll have to argue it isn't a ripoff of every cigar-shaped pen ever made since the Schaefer Balance. Crappy pen? Perhaps. Inquiring minds want to know. And I'm waiting for this Moonman M600S with a new amber acrylic resin finish. This is, of course, a ripoff of the classic Parker Duofold, but is it any crappier than this Conklin Durograph? I don't think so. So that long introduction brings me to today's fountain pen review. Since my supply of cheap, crappy Chinese pens has slowed to a crawl, I decided to search out more reputable cheap, crappy fountain pens sold over the counter at my local pen store. I donned my mask and sanitized my hands and picked up three cheap name brand fountain pens. This Platinum Profonte, a Platinum Plaisir, and a Pilot Explorer. Spoiler alert. The Explorer is made in China. <gasps> and today I'm going to look at the Platinum Profonte, the upscale preppy that can also be eyedroppered, as we shall see right now. Okay, here we are with the Platinum Profonte. 
Now, I was at my pen store the other day, and I picked this up because I have already done a review on the Platinum uh, Preppy, uh, gee, about six months ago or so, and uh, the Prefonte seemed to be uh, an upscale version of the Preppy. Now, there a couple of things I didn't like about the Preppy was that uh, it had this permanent uh, barcode marker on it, and uh, the clip looked kind of cheap, and it really looks like a disposable fountain pen. I was interested in this upscale version that had a slightly better clip, and it looks a little bit more elegant and doesn't look as uh, like you're using a cheap fountain pen. It seems that there are three levels of uh, platinum inexpensive pens, and that's this Preppy, that's very, very popular, and the Prefonte, and then there is this Plaisir, and the Plaisir has a metal body. So, same nibs, looks like the same feeds, and so forth. So I'm going to be doing a review on this as well, uh, upcoming. But let's unbox this one. So the packaging is your standard plastic kind of uh, inexpensive department store kind of packaging with uh, Prefonte fountain pen. So it's a uh, 0.05 millimeter medium nib. And it has that platinum slip and seal. There it says slip and seal there feature on the cap. So it says one year, no dry, uh, which means we'll take a look, closer look at it when I get it out of the box. But there's a little spring in there and it pushes onto the nib to protect it from drying out. So let's see if we can open this up. There's the side opening. And we have the pieces of the pen in the blister pack. The proprietary platinum cartridge. Here's the cap. Get that out. And there's the pen. And nothing else. Let's take a quick look at this pen. Again, a little bit more upscale than your Platinum Preppy. So I think what we'll do now is set up to eyedropper this, show that, and ink it up, and then I'll give it a try. So now that I've got the pen out of the box, what I want to do today is go over the parts and features of this fountain pen, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then do a writing sample. But right out of the box, I think I want to try out the eyedropper ability of this fountain pen, since it's one of the things I did with the Preppy. It should be able to be done with this. So what we're going to do is we're going to cover this with a little bit of silicone grease and put a small silicone O-ring right there. should be fairly easy to do. It's very stretchy. And just roll it down into that little groove. Just a little dabble, do ya? But let's give it a try. So the ink of choice today is in my little Pen BBS 492 bottle. And the ink I've got in this bottle is Iroshizuku Yamabudo, which I thought would be a really nice blend with this scarlet red, crimson red body. Got some ink. And I'm only gonna fill it up to the threads just going to fill it up to there. Before I close this up, I'm just going to measure this. Let's check. One, two, three, three and a half milliliters of ink. Now I need to leave it nib down for a while. And I use my little ink miser that my son 3D printed for me. And we'll let it sit there for a few minutes until the ink flows. And then we'll come back and do the parts and features. Okay, so now that I've inked this pen up, let's take a good look at it. This is the crimson red version of this pen, and it is available also in dark emerald, graphite blue, night sea, and vermilion orange. 
It is a flat bottom and flat top pen made from injection molded plastic. The cap tapers up slightly to the end of the cap where it is branded with silk screened white letters Profonte and on the back 05M for the size of the nib platinum made in Japan. The clip is a typical stamped thin metal. It is fairly springy, fairly nondescript, but certainly an upgrade over the preppy. The barrel tapers very slightly towards the end, which is also flat, but has a dimple in it, which hides that small injection molding gate right there. The cap snaps off to reveal a transparent, slightly tapered plastic grip and a Lamy style medium steel nib. Looking closer at the nib, you can see there is a platinum logo P05 for the line thickness, which is medium, and there's a small slit. And this is also stamped into the surface there. You can see what is a simulated breather hole. And there's the plastic feed, the rest of which you can see through the transparent section. The cap posts deeply and securely and makes the pen very comfortable in the hand. This long section allows for a variety of different grips and that little step right there is not noticeable at all. Let's look at the cap again here for a moment. The Profonti, like the Preppy, has this slip cap mechanism which Platinum uses right up and down its line of pens. The Platinum 3776, which I admire so much, also has this slip cap seal. It is a spring-loaded hood that seals the nib from exposure to the air uh, and hence not drying out. You can just see it there. It's easier to see in the preppy. There it is there inside the preppy. And when you press the nib up in there, that little spring that you see engages and that, oh, full of ink, uh, that little slip cap slips right over top of the nib and seals it. You can also notice, just like the Prepi, there are some little facets inside that plastic that give it a little bit of a shimmer, which is nice. The barrel also has some facets in it just like the preppy and it gives that uh, injection molded plastic just a bit of shimmer as you move the pen around as you can see the barrel removes to reveal a proprietary platinum ink cartridge now you did see you you're not hallucinating you did see me eyedropper this pen uh, earlier but the O-ring I put on there was the wrong size and sort of squeezed out, and so did ink. So I cleaned it out and opened up one of the uh, cartridges that came with the pen, which was the standard platinum blue-black, uh, and cleaned it out and uh, put in Yamabudo with my syringe instead. So when using the correct size O-ring, this pen, just like the Preppy, can be eyedroppered, whereas that cartridge from platinum will accept about a milliliter of ink. Now let's compare it with the preppy. It is an interesting comparison because we can see exactly what platinum has done to give the preppy an upgrade to the Profonte. The cap of the preppy goes on the Profonte and the cap of the Profonte goes on the preppy. Just like the barrel of the Preppy goes on the Profonte, and the barrel of the Profonte goes on the Preppy. So you can have any combination of Franken pen you want because all of the parts are exactly. The same. These barrels are exactly the same part. 
You can see those facets. Same bottom. They're exactly the same part. The only difference is the branding on it. This one has the preppy with that god-awful barcode on it. And this one is choose all branding, which I think is much nicer. It reminded me when I used to go to an old uh, burger restaurant. It was called the Red Barn years and years ago. I'm a hamburger hungry. I can get you night or day. Red Barn's big new salad bar is paradise. It's a garden of eating. And you would ask for a burger without a pickle on it, because I don't like dill pickles. <laughs> and they would charge you five cents to remove the pickle. So, well, just don't put it on in the first place. Well, they charge you to not silkscreen that barrel. So you don't want this? Upsell. The only real upgrade that you're seeing between these two pens is the cap. They both have that slip and seal uh, sealing mechanism, which is nice, but the Profonte cap is much more elegant, slimmer, with that flat top and a metal clip, and very minimalistic branding on it, which is a big step up from this horrible clip with those big bold letters and uh, this sort of clear and uh, clear plastic design. The sections are identical. The nibs are identical. So uh, there is absolutely no difference between these two pens other than the color of ink that's in them. We'll talk about this later when we talk about what I like and what I don't like about this pen. So the upgrade that you're looking at for the Profonte over the Preppy is about 10 bucks because the Preppy is about $5 US and the Profonte is about 15 US. I was at my pen store today buying a Con 70 Pilot Converter. More on that in an upcoming video. But I commented to my pen lady that the Con 70 effectively doubles the cost of my Pilot Explorer. I told you more about that in a future video. Wait for it. Wait for it! <laughs> She told me she has people buying the Preppy and adding the Platinum Converter all the time. The Platinum Converter is more than twice the price of the Preppy. I think it'd be much better just to syringe your ink into these empty converters, which is what I've done right here. Getting a Con 70 for a Pilot Explorer, now that makes some sense, but that's another story. I was a Colonel in the Paul Legion. Is that before or after you were a professor at economics? No, in between I was a croupier in Monte Carlo, but that's another story. And now let's look at some size comparisons. Okay, here is the Platinum Profonte with a Platinum Preppy and a Pilot Explorer and a Pilot Metropolitan and a Lamy Safari. Now let's look at them posted. The Perfonte and the Preppy are, of course, almost identical. And then the Pilot Explorer is a little bit longer when it's posted. The Pilot Metropolitan, about the same length as the posted Perfonte and the Pre Preppy. And the Lamy Safari is the longest of the five. Now let's look at some measurements, and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine 90 GSM paper, and this is the Platinum Prefonte in crimson red and a medium steel nib. And the ink is Hiroshizuku Yamabudo. 
let's check the wetness here. See, it's not an overly wet pen, but that dib is so smooth. It doesn't seem to make a lot of difference. It's not something I would probably operate on because it doesn't seem to affect the writing of the nib at all. As to line variation, well, that's a no pressure line, medium, and that's some pressure, yeah. The nib bends, but it doesn't flex, which is not unusual for a Lamy style. Tiny little nib, tiny little slit, it's not going to flex open at all. But when we look at reverse writing, it actually writes fairly nicely and uh, keeps up as well with the flow. So you do get a couple of different line styles if you want them in a pinch. And let's listen to it write. Very, very smooth. This has no feedback whatsoever. It's pretty glassy. And for a little quick writing. It keeps up very, very nicely. So, what do I like and what do I not like so much about this fountain pen? Well, the first thing I like about the Profonte is its price. Although it is more expensive than its little brother, the Preppy, it is still a very affordable fountain pen. I like the slip and seal cap mechanism and the fact that Platinum's budget line carries the same feature as their top of the line. That's impressive. I like the way the pen writes. It is smooth and buttery and wet enough to glide nicely, even in the reverse. I like that the clip is indeed a clip that you can actually use, a metal springy clip. It's a big improvement over this really kind of a toy, disposable pen kind of clip on the preppy. I like that the pen with the correct O-ring can be converted to an eyedropper and takes a ton of ink. What don't I like about it? Well, I don't like that the plastic is relatively soft and marks up pretty easily, scuffs pretty easily uh, in a case or knock about on your desk. But that's kind of what you get with injection molded plastic like this. I also don't like that it uh, takes proprietary cartridges and that the converter is twice the cost of a preppy. But for what it is, a knockabout, plastic starter fountain pen, it's very nice. It comes in some really cool colors and looks cool as well. I really like this crimson red. In fact, um, they didn't have this red in a medium in my store. This was before the pandemic really hit. We were all in lockdown. And uh, my pen lady said she would uh, let me know when one came in. Well, she let me know last week. So... I waited two months for this little pen, but I like it. Nice red, and it matches the Yamabudo really, really nicely. So I think this is a definite upgrade from the Preppy and worth the extra upgrade cost, in my opinion. But I have to say that for the cost of a Profonte, including a platinum cartridge converter, you can purchase a much more substantial fountain pen made with turned acrylic resin, a shaped resin section, a swappable number six steel nib, which also includes a converter. Oh my God, Doug, where can you get a pen like this? Well, here it is. The Pen BBS 308. This one is in the infinite color. The price of the Profonte demonstrator with a converter is $18.25 US. That's, I'm quoting prices from Jet Pens right now. Plus, you'd add another $5 in shipping for shipping to the United States, if you're in the United States. JetPens is also not shipping to Canada right now. Canada sucks! Uh, so that's a total of $23.25 for the Profonte. 
The price of a Pen BBS 308 demonstrator with a converter is $13.99. Now, this one's actually $15.99 because of the color. But if you get a clear one, or you get uh, the green one or some of the base level ones, they're $13.99 plus $8 shipping from Etsy for a total of $21.99 US. But again, with the Platinum, you are dealing with an established brand name. So yeah, by all means, go for the established brand name over a turned acrylic uh, crappy pen from China. So there you have it. Next week, I'll take a look at the upgrade to the Profonte, the Platinum Plaisir, and we'll find out whether the upgrade is worth it. Your mileage, as always, will vary. Your mileage may vary. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get an instant notification whenever new videos are posted. And that just leaves it for me to say... Thank you for watching, and that's all she wrote.